Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke saying hi, and today I'm introducing you guys to a new piece of hardware. After going back and forth with a couple of you, including triple or double zero double eleven, um, I had um, decided that I'd go ahead and, and do a 10 gigabit enterprise level scale up from my Nortel platform up to a Juniper uh, series. Um, EX 3300-24T uh, and that is basically a 10 gig switch platform that is right here and it is a very nice platform it's capable of doing quite a bit right now I've initiated a halt process and as you can see it's a really good addition with the 10 gigabit architecture in, integrated to it so I can begin to bring two other platforms into my environment while being able to splice off to my ISP and my 10 gig switches. So this would give me a total of 16 ports but on a whopping 140 bucks that's an incredible savings. Up here you see my uh, laptop which I'm prepping to access the unit here. Um, when you get these units they'll have a lot of uh, legacy errors occurred because of you know GBixes are gone, or configurations are not correct, or you're running into a state where you have um, previous configurations that are out there. So what it's recommended you do is you go out to the Juniper website and you initiate the process of purging all the values and flipping back to uh, maintenance default manufacturing levels so that you can have yourself set up. So I've done that and I've already initiated a halt here. Uh, surprisingly, as you can hear, it's not very loud compared to my mic, uh, but when it does start, it does get a little bit noisy. So I'm going to go ahead and reinitiate it here. Nice and quiet. And then I'm put it back in. Now that's the initial diagnostics process to get the fans tested and rated. And as you can see down here, it's beginning the process of loading. And this will take a minute here um, because this is going to generate some results and information, but it's also very baseline. And I'm going to initiate what is known as the EZ setup deployment so that I can get set for access. Um, so this will just take a few minutes here, standby. Now, as you've heard, the whining, what I call the whining noise, has stepped down now that the unit has loaded. And now I'm going to go ahead and transition this over to maintenance mode. And then I'm going to go over past this. And I want this guy right here, easy setup. Press that. And confirm. And now it's initializing. And so with this, I'll go through the process of staging this array and getting it prepped. So port ID should be port zero, which is this guy right here. I'm getting some telemetry traffic, so let's do a port config. And check. And I can hit it now. And that's all it took. Now that you're able to hit the IP address, then you should be able to go in and begin the process of doing a initial access and authenticate so you can set this unit up. Of course, yep, here we go, right here. And I, the default manufacturing password is nothing. So I should just put in root and enter. And it should, yep, and I'm in. So at this point stage, you have your introduction. As you can see here, your introduction, base settings, maintenance options, management options, and so on and so on and I'm going to set this up for my environment so 
I'm not going to show you that information at this point stage, but it is an idea, and when I've got this done, I'll do that posted and set it configuration-wise. So, stand by for a minute. Okay, so now we are at the point stage where we have configured our resources up, and we've got our internal light resources in play. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to show you that information pertaining to you know, my infrastructure, um, but if I choose to, it'll be because I'll have to restart over again with a clean infrastructure. So, just as a quick heads up, we'll see some changes here, and um, let it come off my gateway. And with that finish. And then what I'll do next is because I've made my management IP hidden on an internal closed switch, I'll be able to keep this pretty much uh, tight, per se. You want to do that. Now, out of bandwidth, network management is a crucial detail that which you want to consider doing. And here, I'll do the login, and we can show the configuration. Okay, so here we are now inside the console manager. And I can see the health and state status of the environment. Up here, I'll have all the, the technical information which you need. And, of course, a graphical representation of your outputs. Here you have your GBIC interfaces for 1 gig up to 10 gig. Here we have the state, our infrastructure environments, our resources, our alerts. We have a major Ethernet management link down that's just saying that I'm not using the back import uh, management console connection in this case because I've got it set, segmented to out of bandwidth. Um, with this being the case, and as you can see, we're running pretty nicely. It's very clean, it's very functional very easy to set up you don't have to be a network architect to do this kind of stuff some other things that are value here is we can look at the configuration side but more specifically let's look at monitoring and in the monitoring environments we can see any alarm notifications uh, we do have a couple of course it's showing that our management link is down that's okay uh, we have other events at which we want to look at for progress reports now i'm showing some red lights uh, on the switch itself right here uh, which are referring to a couple of the import port connections I think that's something I can address uh, but you can still continue to go through um, how the system is developed and, and strategized right here as you can see we're looking at the system profile now one thing I did notice that this system takes quite a while to boot about four minutes so it's doing a lot of localized loading and uh, that is good and that's also bad because if there's any complications you may have to literally go inside and remove the flash drive but for the most part so far good to go as i can see here now this is set up now to plug into my existing network and begin to function as part of the network overall hybrid environment itself now the key detail about that is up here i've got my environment ping scripts running on my Linux box and I've got my Windows 11 box down here doing the preliminary access interface. Uh, so with that being the case, I'm going to do a couple more checks here and I'm going to plug this up into my master network to allow some extended services and firmware checks and things like that to happen next. So stand by. Okay, so now what we've got here is we've got the red light back that's because i disconnected the, the cable interface on the back end of the unit which shows right here as an alert if you switch to a rear view here you will see that uh, once it brings it up right there it shows that port inactive right there because that's inactive it's going to give you this alert down here that you're offline and that it's a major issue. To me it's not an issue because I'm changing the way I'm managing the device through common interface because it is an isolated device switch wise than the other environment. Okay so now I've got here a 1 gig GBIC 850 nanometer set and then three 10 gig um, nanometer style GBICs is here as well 
and the GPICs are basically, uh, in this case, a fiber GPIC, XPF style, as you can see here, and it has the interface here, and this one is an Intel series. And usually what I tell people is, is if you've got these in sequences, make sure you plug them up in sequence. That way, an Intel is to an Intel, or in this case, a Fezar. A Fezar is, you know, going to be uh, going to the same class adapter. The only thing that's inheritably different is the GBIC, the one gigabit GBIC, this guy right here. He is actually very straightforward, no nonsense, uh, one gig baseline GBIC. And I'm going to use that as my uplink to my one gigabit ISP provider service. So I'm putting that guy in. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to flip to see our state. And it's showing inactive state set in play, which is good. That's fine. And I'm going to put each of the other GBICs in to get them to register correctly. And let's see here. And I'm getting some responses. That's good. All right. So what I've basically done now is I've got the GBICs lined up. The three covered are the 10 gigs. This is the one gig right here. And when I place this into the server environment in my next video, you'll be able to see that in action. So with that, I'm just kind of giving you the roadmap on how we are facilitating this new part of the test phase. And this is my internal closed loop infrastructure IP address. You can't get to that. It's on a, an isolated switch network for management. But it's just to give me a resource that I can have a very fast backbone uh, to do my backup jobs and things like that. Things that I keep away from the front end network that's related to the internet. But that's why I've got this guy right here is if I need it, I can bridge it very easily. So um, there are two types of layers of network that I like to work with beyond the management console network. And that's of course your backbone which is where you're doing all your data moving and then your front end, which is where you're providing services. So with that being said, this is uh, Brad Dyke signing off. I hope this works out really good for you guys. This is really cool. Um, I saved up money for, to do this because you know I don't have much to work with. Everything I do here is strictly on a resource-based effort to try to help everybody out there in the world these days. Well, this is me signing off. Uh, God bless and have a great week. You guys take care.